Hey folks, I'm Brendan and you're watching The Overqualified Henchman. Now you know me, I love comics, so it pains me to admit this, but some comics are not great. And as a comics reader, capital C, capital R, it's easy to get jaded. To hear the pitch for a story and just roll your eyes because it's so clearly a phoned in marketing tie-in cash grab. But sometimes the opposite happens. Sometimes an idea that has no right to be anything but terrible gets put in the hands of a creative team who actually decide to give a damn and something magical happens. So hold on to your butts and put your cynicism in the back seat for a minute because I'm about to make the argument for why you should be reading DC Bombshells. DC Bombshells started as a line of statues featuring the company's heroines in outfits and poses inspired by 1940s pinup art. Now listen, I'm not going to come down too hard on these. They're cheeky and fun, and I'm always interested to see the bright colors and shapes of superhero costumes as viewed through the lens of a different style. That said, I think it's fair to say that a statue of Poison Ivy in period-appropriate lingerie has a pretty specific target market in mind. The line of statues was pretty popular as these things are measured, so it was really only a matter of time before somebody at DC said, hey, they should really have a tie-in comic. Now, keep in mind, this would be a comic based on a line of statues, based on a series of pinup art, based on a bunch of comic characters. Historically, that kind of thing hasn't been a recipe for success, so there was much of the aforementioned eye-rolling. But here's where things start to get interesting, because the project was given to Marguerite Bennett, and she and her team decided that there was something to work with here. They came up with a mission statement, and it's obvious within the first couple of panels, as Batwoman steps in to prevent the murder of Thomas and Martha Wayne. Now, without a larger background knowledge of comics and their history, it might be tough to understand why that's such a mind-blowing way to open your story, but the simplest way I can put it is that Batwoman is generally considered derivative of Batman. She's an associated character. Batgirl, Aquawoman, Supergirl, Hawkgirl, they all have the same problem. But Bombshell says right from the get-go that this world doesn't have a Batman, it won't have a Batman, and it doesn't need a Batman. It's got Batwoman. Each of the series' heroes is allowed to be their own character, and an interesting, well-developed character. Their different personalities allow the tone of the comic to switch from pulp action to war story to horror, even. The writing takes the same thoughtful approach to the subject matter that it does to the characters. Steve Trevor, for instance, is wrapped with PTSD, and not a movie version that he can conveniently get over at the climax of the story but the sort that he has to manage for the rest of his life, with good days and bad days. The comic deals with the horrors of war in a surprisingly even-handed manner. Overall, the characters are against killing, but it also points out that it's easy to say what you would or wouldn't do when you're not the one being put in that situation. It takes a similarly nuanced approach to themes like abusive relationships and the death of a loved one. One of my favorite bits is the Tenebrae, basically zombies, and yes, Zombies in World War II has been done to death, pun intended. In this case, they're a little more madness-inducing, elder god, cosmic horror, but that's not the clever part. See, the Tenebrae claim any soldier who dies who's pledged himself to a higher power, to give over his will and his actions to someone else's judgment. In other words, they're taking the idea of just following orders to a very comic booky extreme, and thematically, it works really well here. Okay, so sounds like this is a pretty serious comic. Definitely not fun or sexy. Well... The comic is definitely fun, and it knows not to take itself too seriously. Batwoman is constantly making puns, and during one huge battle, she proclaims at the top of her lungs that she really loves homonyms. Later, when Hawkgirl is tasked to build a vehicle for Batwoman, Catwoman, and Vixen, she comes up with the Animal Unaffiliated Mobile. Even the political and social commentary knows when it can be a little tongue-in-cheek, like a politician proclaiming that they're going to make Gotham great again. As for sexy, I think it's fair to say that Bombshells is as much a romance story as it is a war story. It's just that it's less about shallow eye candy and more about moments of tenderness stolen in a difficult time. When Arthur Curry finally shows up, we find out he's the soft-spoken Irish keeper of a secluded lighthouse who's good with animals and has healing hands. I know I got somebody's attention with that. There's a little something for everyone. Speaking of which, if you're already familiar with the characters, then you probably knew that Batwoman, Maggie Sawyer, and Renee Montoya meant that there was going to be some pretty good representation for lesbian characters in this book. Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, and John Constantine mean that the B's, Q's, and pluses are pretty well covered as well. I don't know who pitched the idea for Dr. Light and Big Barda, but I would like to subscribe to their newsletter. There's a scene where a trans character talks about how the sorts of questions people ask her tend to say more about them than about her, and it's all just really solid stuff. DC Bombshells is a digital first comic, which means it first comes out in digital form, with every three chapters eventually being collected as a single print issue. It also means that the layouts are designed with a smartphone or tablet in mind, so I'd actually recommend checking out the digital version over the
over the print version if you've got the choice. Took me a long time to pick up DC Bombshells just because of the branding, and my only regret is that I didn't do so sooner. Check it out. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments about some of your favorite hidden gems, be they comics or other media. As always, you'd be doing me a big favor if you remembered to like, subscribe, and share. And while you're at it, think about checking me out on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Until next time, keep on henching. Not gonna lie, it took a couple tries to get Batwoman. <laughs>